There you know how cameras are everywhere nowadays. Shops, restaurants, cafes, subways, even the elevator. But sometimes the unexpected and funny things are caught on camera and security guards have their minds blown. Have you ever been on vacation or at an event where you caught something super unexpected on cameras? You know, something so unexpected that you had to show all your friends and family? Well, today we're here to do just that. And we've searched high and low all over the world for the brilliance of those kind of snaps that are worth more than technology they were filmed with. An empty elevator seems like an exceptionally private place to dig something out of your teeth or adjust your panties. But there could still be eyes on you. Look at the ceiling and you might spot a security camera keeping a watchful eye. It's clear why they can help. Catching incidents of violence instead of letting aggressors hide behind closed doors. For instance, Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice was cut from the team after a video of him striking his now wife in an elevator was released. You do have some degree of privacy though. Elevator cameras can't record sound, which would violate federal wiretapping laws as they're always high up instead of at eye level, according to The Atlantic. The true story of Elisa Lamb, a Canadian student who went missing back in 2013 and was later found dead inside the water tank atop a Los Angeles hotel, is one of the most bone-chilling you'll ever come across here on the internet. There's a good chance you've seen the unsettling elevator footage from days prior to Lamb's death, which shows her acting in a very unnatural manner. To this day, no one's quite sure what happened to the young student. We've just learned that producer Sean Cunningham, The Last House on the Left and Friday the 13th, is producing a new horror film inspired by the tragically true story of Elisa Lamb, titled The Elevator Game. The film will be produced under Cunningham's Crystal Lake Entertainment banner, and it's set to begin filming in Los Angeles this coming September. In The Elevator Game, a young woman goes in search of her sister, who disappears after participating in a mysterious internet ritual known as The Elevator Game. Layla had never heard of the elevator game until her younger sister, Mandy, went missing. Security camera footage shows Mandy entering an elevator in a decrepit old hotel downtown and never coming back out. When the police investigation into Mandy's disappearance runs cold, Layla takes matters into her own hands. The internet has stories of people disappearing after playing something called the elevator game. Some think it's an urban legend, others swear it's true. Buried in the darkest corners of the internet are the rules for one of the world's most dangerous games. According to the game, if you enter an elevator and press the buttons in a certain sequence, you'll be transported to another dimension in the spirit plane, the other world. There you'll be granted your deepest secret desire, or you may find death and damnation. Convinced her sister is trapped in the other world, the only way for Layla to save her lost sister is to play the elevator game herself. But the game comes with a steep price. Some players have lost their lives, others their souls. If Layla isn't careful, she might lose both. The elevator game was originated in Korea and Japan and went on to gain worldwide notoriety online when it was blamed for the mysterious death of Elisa Lam, a young woman who was found drowned in a sealed water tank on top of the Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. A viral video of a man trying to slip into a woman's home in Silim Dong, Seoul has sparked a flood of harrowing testimonies from Korean women who say stalking and sexual assault by strangers is a real and widespread problem, especially for women who live alone. Some of them reached out to the Korea Times to share their accounts. I've had several instances where drunk men have followed me to the front door. I literally had to run inside the building while keeping a male friend on the phone. Kang Zhu En, 25, a university student living in Silim Dong, said on Friday. The video clip, tagged Failed Rape, was posted on Twitter on Tuesday afternoon. After the disturbing event was caught on a surveillance camera outside the woman's home early in the morning of the same day. In the footage, now shared over 58,000 times on Twitter, a young woman steps out of the elevator and taps on a keypad lock to enter her apartment. As the door is about to shut behind her, a man in his 30s steps out of the still open elevator and extends his arm toward the door, a second too late. Agitated, he paces around the locked door, pushing at the door handle and keypad. In the extended version of the video footage, later released by local broadcasters and YouTubers, 
The man loiters in front of the door for 10 minutes. He even shines his cell phone flashlight at the keypad in the dark, trying to make out the woman's fingerprints. Police said the man also threatened the woman, saying he'd force the door open if she didn't let him in. The man, surnamed Cho, turned himself into the police after the video went viral, and he discovered the police were trying to identify him. Cho, who had no prior ties with the targeted women, followed her from the streets. He pressed a higher number in the elevator to trick her into thinking he was going into a different floor, according to the woman's testimony. Cho has denied all charges, saying he was drunk and doesn't remember anything. The court issued an arrest warrant Friday evening, saying there was a high risk of him repeating his actions. Cho was also fined in 2012 for sexually harassing a woman on the street. Some 2.8 million women live alone, around half of all single-person households in Korea, according to most recent government statistics. The number is increasing each year as more young people choose to stay single or put off marriage. Being a woman living alone makes one a more likely target of crime. A 2017 report by the Korean Institute of Criminology shows women were 2.3 times more likely to face crimes compared to men in single household group aged up to 33. According to government data revealed by Representative Kang Shang Il of the Democratic Party of Korea last October, 1,310 break-in sexual violence cases were reported from 2014 to 2017, an average of once a day. Perpetrators were men in 99.8% of the cases, and 28% involved rape. Women who live alone in small flats in residential villas or buildings located in darker alleys say sexual harassment and stalking is common. Some of these men are perfectly sober and as young as the women, according to collected testimonies. Ju, age 23, a university student who asked to be identified by her surname, said she recently moved to a bigger residential building located on the main street after multiple encounters with strangers who followed or harassed her on her way home. They try to make small talk. When you decline and walk on, they run after you and hug you from behind, or they just silently follow you down the alley. I had to take refuge inside a nearby supermarket before I could run home, she said. At this new building, there's a guard who keeps out strangers on the first floor. The monthly rent is 200,000 won, or $170 more, but I guess I could call it the cost of protecting my life. People who can't afford the move to safer housing resort to measures like leaving men's shoes in front of their door or playing male voice recordings, hoping it will chase away such unwanted trespassers. Experts say there's still no laws in place to adequately punish stalkers like Cho who show a clear intent to commit sexual violence. In the small number of cases that are reported, most get away with a small fine or short detention on charges of trespassing. Unlike arson or murder, there are no laws for punishing rape or sexual violence in its planning or preparation stages, said Kim Yong-hwa, a professor of law and women's studies at sung Yik Women's University Law School. It's obvious he, Cho, did not push at the door or just trespass, but I'm not sure how prosecutors will manage to charge Cho of failed rape before relevant legislation fills in this gap in the legal system. This is not about pointing out or piling on, but rather understanding that it's often someone else's unfortunate situation that highlights gaps we have in our own process. Perfect opportunity to test your own emergency systems, elevator or otherwise, and see if they measure up, not just to code, but to your own standards of care. So, elevator entrapments. Let's take a poll, shall we?